Hello and welcome to the Movie Bunker podcast. It's me, Matt. Hey, it's me, Chris. We've got a special guest, uh, John Nugent, joins the podcast uh, this week. Hi, John. Welcome to the bunker. Hi. Thank you for having me in your bunker. <laughs> um, how are you coping in in this these strange times at the moment yeah not too bad not too bad it's funny how quickly you adapt i'm kind of used to just uh yeah working in a pair of slippers um yeah i mean it's been what how long has it been now three months four months yeah three uh, months. Uh, years. 12 months <laughs> time, time is just immaterial at this point yeah, no, we're, we're doing all right. For anyone who's not familiar <laughs> with what you do, just introduce yourself and, and, and what it is, your, uh, how you're related to the film world. Uh, yeah, I work for Empire Magazine, the world's uh, best-selling film magazine, I think. That's what I have to say to um, when I'm trying to ask publicists to let me speak to celebrities or whatever. <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I don't know if that's actually true. It probably is. There's no film magazine in the US, so I think we're the, we're the only... I think we're the best-selling one. Anyway, I'm, this is all sounding quite arrogant already. Yeah, I'm, I'm the news editor there, uh, and I've been there. I, I started about five years ago. Uh, I started on the online team, and then I became the news editor about two or three years ago. So I look after the front section of the magazine, which is quite a strange job to have at the moment when there's really no news. It's been interesting putting together a film magazine when all the cinemas are closed, but we've managed it so far. Uh, John, you've come on to discuss... A wiki wiki wild film. <laughs> That's what was right. Your, what was your film of choice? It's uh, Wild Wild West. Jim West <laughs> Desperado. Not getting enough lift. We need more speed. Uh, Gordy, that's a cliff. Yes, I know. Uh, that means the ground is going to end. Yes, I know. Wild, wild. Gordon, 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 Gordon. Wild, 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 wild. Before there was a secret service. When I'm throwing the dude wild, wild, wild. There was West. Jim West. Uh. West, Jim West, Desperado, Rough Rider. No, you don't want nada. None of this. It's gunning this. Rub the running. Jim West, Taylor the West. So remember the name. Now who you gonna call? Not the GB. Now who you gonna call? G-W-G. Touch your chest, loveless. Can't stand the heat to get out the wild. Ooh, wild. Are you a dangerous spy? Or just a, a handsome cowboy? Likes to poke I believe I'm that second one. <laughs> Gotta stick to what we each do best. From the director of Men in Black. Now what? Let the party begin! Kevin Klein. Oh my gosh. I love this train. Kenneth Branagh. Papa. And Selma Hayek. And it's a whole new West. It's almost uh, impossible to talk about this film without talking about the song, isn't it? I mean, it's like, it, the, the song is almost more famous than the film, I feel. It feels like pure hit of nostalgia, 90s nostalgia. Yeah, well, well I'd, I'd go as far as to say that maybe the, the, the song is better than the film. <laughs> 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 but why, why this movie, John? What, what is it about this film particularly that really floats your boat? Uh, I, I, I don't know. It, I, I mean, it's again, it's nostalgia, probably. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go so far as to say that it is necessarily a good film, but um, I watched it again recently. I hadn't watched it in a few years, and I still, I still felt little tingles of pleasure. It, I, so this came at a time when I was like really starting to love movies. It, you know, it was released in 1999, so I would have been about I would have been about 12 or 13 maybe. Mm. Um so I was really excited about movies by that point and uh I saw Men in Black which came out I think in 97 a couple of years before 
which had the same team behind it, Barry Sonnefeld, the director, and Will Smith. And Will Smith at the time was like my hero. He was like, I, I, his Millennium, I think, was the first album I ever bought. Uh, that, that sort of masterpiece of, of hip hop. Yeah. Um, as we all remember. Uh, and so World War West is almost like a sort of Men in Black sequel. It's like, a, it's like a Western sequel to Men in Black, you know. So yeah, I remember seeing it at the cinema and just being like, just hyped, just fully hyped. Um, and, and maybe st still of an age where you don't have quite enough critical faculties to think that a giant mechanical spider is a bit shit, perhaps. You know, it's <laughs> like... Well, this this is the thing with a movie. Watching movies in your early t as a teen, as a child, it's just it's just completely. This is a, an obvious uh, statement here, but it's obviously <laughs> a completely different experience. Yeah. And and of course, your 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 brain and how you suck things in and uh, is you're like a sponge, aren't you? So this 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 really yeah. shapes you. And I'm the same with movies because I um of of like the Jim Henson or the early creature feature things because I tried to rewatch uh, the Dark Crystal which I absolutely adored and and was fanatical about as a kid and I tried to watch it for another podcast we were guesting on last uh, earlier on in the year and I found it really hard to to watch and follow and just to to invest the time yeah. in because it does it really asks a lot of the viewer just to to go along with it and this this here this is wild wild west let, well let me just read the plot synopsis okay the two best special agents in the wild wild west must save president grant from the clutches of a diabolical wheelchair bound steampunk savvy confederate scientist <laughs> bent on revenge for losing the civil war well, what i mean that as a plot synopsis it sounds freaking amazing <laughs> <laughs> I remember when this film came yeah. out because I think this is the first film I remember being horribly panned. Like um, I, mm. I very clearly remember because you know this was Will Smith that everyone knew and loved. He'd done Men in Black and it was everyone loved that film. It was brilliant. Um, expectations were very high for this, and then it just got absolutely like roasted upon release. Um, <clears throat> so it, because of that, I didn't see it straight away. Um, and this is one of the first kind of films where. Um, I enjoyed it because it was so badly panned that my expectations were set unrealistically low. Uh, so yeah. then when I finally watched it, I was like, it actually isn't that bad. Well, I don't know what they're banging on about. So. <laughs> I, I mean, it's, let's be honest, it's not, it's not great, but it's, I, I, it's, I think they're, they're, it's got some redeeming qualities to it. I don't know. I mean, the song in itself, you can't, that's just <laughs> incredible. We, we've talked about Will Smith and he definitely carries the movie, but so does... I would say Kevin Klein, uh, who's his, uh, yeah, uh, it's like a buddy, um, genre what a kind of, of buddy cop. Yes, genre. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of got that feel to it, and they're the, the begrudgingly sort of put together, and they're the sort of polar opposites. But Kenneth Branagh chewing the scenery as uh, Doctor <laughs> Arliss Lovelace, and you got Salma Hayek, who plays the the kind of love interest, or um, oh, I don't know what else she's trying to do there, but she's basically given not a great deal to work with. Um, you've got some good people in there, like Ted Levine, who does quite a nice little part as, as like a crazy General McGrath. What's his role? It's kind of like a, he's a protagonist of sorts, but kind yeah, of he's just- the, he's the initial, he's like the sub general bad guy, right? So he's the, yeah. he's the initial very obvious bad guy. I mean, they, they, watching this film, you could watch this with the sound off and you would know who it, everyone was and what they were doing simply by the look of them because the bad guys look very bad <laughs> and the good guys <laughs> look very good because you know one of them's will smith well, obviously and yeah the other one is, is kevin klein i kind of like sam hayek's kind of arc in this though i like the fact that in the end she didn't wasn't like the girl that was one she was kind of just using them to help rescue her husband knowing men are fickle and stupid pretended to be single and used her wiles to get what she wanted yeah she was she was sort of playing them off each other but also i mean you know from a sort of filmmaking perspective she was just sort of eye candy um yeah. it's 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 not there's a there's an honest trailer of this film which i watched the other night and uh it is it, it it's <laughs> it does make a good point that it feels like a film written by a teenage boy there's a lot of just <laughs> like really cheap like sex humor that, that yeah. I don't think has dated especially well in the last 20 years. But that was a question I uh, watching this. Like, what was the rating of this film? 
because I, it, I was finding it really hard to Definitely. figure out where it's actually what audience it was placed at because you know it kind of had the feel of a sort of Sunday afternoon romp but then had quite dark elements in it and stuff that you would have to clearly explain plus being quite overtly sexualized in some places yeah. It's a PG. It's a PG thirteen for sex references, innuendo, and yeah, action violence. So it would yeah, that makes sense. Um, I suppose a lot of it is smutty humour, isn't it? There's the one scene in particular that I made a note about was the the boobs, the boobies thing. Because I mean, every time Will Smith does say boobies, it was quite funny because he <laughs> says it like, with a lot of pizzazz, and he says it probably as, as as more times than I've ever heard in any film. But when when she, Kev, Kevin Klein's characters with the fake uh, boobs that because he dresses up as a woman quite a lot and they're having that whole conversation about what feels better it, it is it takes up quite a lot of time doesn't it it's quite a long yes. labored scene and thinking wow they really invested in this yes i remember th- yeah that scene where they're sort of they're doing the terrible innuendos like feel my breast yeah. i remember yeah. as a 12 year old just that kills that killed as a 12 year old that was like <laughs> the funniest thing i'd ever heard in my life and then I watched it again as a 33-year-old the other night and was like, oh, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, that's, that's what's going on. That's what the, jo- yeah. Uh, that's a shame. <laughs> yeah. Oh, never mind. Uh, what I noticed about that scene, was, which was weird, is that it, it ended, but the scene didn't actually end. So, like, the, everything that was to be said and to be done was done in the scene. And then there was, like, a, a reasonably overly long pause, and then he just, Will Smith uh, turns around and, walks out of a door unnecessarily. It's just, it's just really weird. It was a bit of pacing that was, yeah, it was odd. I found that actually, Matthew, because I wrote down editing and pacing uh, as well in terms of notes, because there are real issues, I think, with, with how it's put together, because there's, a, yeah. there's another scene where, um, where they're captured for the first time, and it really doesn't work, because they, <laughs> with the, the, the metal things around the neck with the, with the magnets and the, the, uh, the, the blades thing, you're kind of plonked right into that scene without really understanding how they got there. And it sort of, it does lose loads of pacing uh, all, all the way through it. it it does feel a bit disjointed watching it with sort of adult eyes i think i think it was slightly like problematic shoots i think it had like about a, it was one of those films that had about a billion writers and uh <laughs> i think i, I think they, they it tested quite badly originally i think they had um test audiences didn't really know if it was like a comedy or a, a sci-fi and so they had loads of reshoots and so I think you can feel the reshoots, you know, it feels like yeah. there's, there's a lot of different films battling it out there. Well, um, I presume it'd be a lot more of um, Will Smith smooching because he, he loves to kiss. And uh, <laughs> the, the, after the, what is quite a lovely um, uh, opening title sequence that you don't see anymore or very, very mm. often with the cards and a little prelude to what's happening in, in the, what's going to happen in the film to come. We get a lot of smooching in his water house that he lives in, which is, Sort of problematic in itself. <laughs> but I, mean, I was thought that so... is actually his home. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, the whole backdrop in there is is, is is water tank, and he's having a lovely swim and a, and, a, and a snog, and all his belongings are up on like a shelves and stuff like that. So his whole house is destroyed at the very beginning. But the kissing is um is off the charts. It's some of the best on screen kissing I think I've ever seen. <laughs> if yeah, I may. Well, <laughs> Um, yeah, it, it's it's interesting that Will Smith uh, doesn't even know if he's kissing someone at, at times. You know, that's <laughs> yeah. like he can just be moving his mouth and he's not aware whether or not he's actually making contact with anyone. I mean, that's for, for Will Kiss to have a good kiss, all he needs is Will Smith. Like that's the only part of the, of the relationship that he feels right. the Will Smith side of things. <laughs> Do you think he just sits by himself at, at home in the mirror, just sort of like... Just kissing nothing. <laughs> I think he definitely does. I think that's what he does. I did also write uh, he... down about the proper credits as well. Oh. I actually put underneath board now because oh yeah, we're, we're so conditioned to not have credits anymore at the start of films. So I was like, yeah. oh, credits. And I got quite excited. And then I realised why they got rid of them. It's like, oh, God, come on. Hurry up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you really have to want to know who is the key grip, don't you? To sort of <laughs> want to get to the... <laughs> You should also give a shout out to uh, Elmer Bernstein, who who does the score, and he's obviously you know a bit of a Hollywood legend, yeah. and actually scored some 
you know classic westerns so you know he did the magnificent seven score so that it's there's a sort of it, it's weird like it, it leans into that western thing in the opening titles and then it doesn't really feel like a western for the rest of the film i mean it's got the setting but it's not like a there's nothing there's nothing very john ford about this film you know it's it's like it's, it's kind of steampunk sci-fi caper more yeah. than anything yeah, it, it's like that movie. What's that film that Peter Jackson did recently with the uh, traveling cities on in, in England? What was that oh, called? Oh yeah, yeah, it, uh, it, Mortal Engines. Yes. Yeah, because it could have been. This could have been like a future dystopian kind of uh, world, couldn't it? Where things have gone yeah. back to steam because everything is quite futuristic, as you say. So it has that kind of feel to it, uh, and the Western elements are there at the beginning, potentially when there's that first kind of uh, skiffle in in the uh, in the bar. Yeah, like but yeah, the after western that, it... parts are really front loaded because he does like there was a couple of western, real proper western stunts where he's you know gone along a train of horses and stopped yeah. the horses and got them back up. And you're like, yeah, proper western, but it, it, that, that's the end of the westerny parts. <laughs> after that, the most westerny thing you get is a train, and that's it. <laughs> yeah. Well, the train is yeah. kind of again is an amazing prop because. All the technology that's used in this this fantastic train with all the inventions, all the sp- inspector gadget type stuff going on mm. in it, it's great to watch and great to look at, but it's obviously completely unrealistic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, oh. there's some of the science and physics of this film are, you know, you really have to scratch your head. I think the magnet scene, it just think like that's that's. I kept thinking that's not how magnets work. Like, mag- <laughs> that's not how don't just like works. <laughs> magnets don't f- just like fly through the air and then just do a sort of loop like a jet plane. It's just like it's nonsense. But it's, it's not even just the magnet y part of this. The fact that, like, at the, at the end, when they jump into each other's arms to escape the magnets, which is again not how they work, <laughs> is that the two <laughs> sort of like magnetic discs hit each other. And in a very unmetally way, explode in fire. <laughs> <laughs> that actually, uh, that was the biggest laugh of the film for me. Uh, as a, watching as a thirty-three-year-old, I thought that was amazing. Uh, that's a bit like you know in the Simpsons, where s- certain things just like set on fire yeah. randomly. Like Homer, mm. Homer Simpson tries to make a bowl of cereal, and the bowl of cereal just explodes <laughs> into flames. <laughs> It's probably a good idea to to spend a bit of time about uh, with uh, Kenneth Branagh in this in this movie because he's he's good to he's good and bad to watch in this because it feels like he's really he's really going for it um, but does deliver doesn't really deliver it ultimately because I know he's supposed to be really scary but he just comes off as a real creepy leery lurchy kind of geezer, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's, yeah, he's, you're right. He's really going for it. I, I kind of love how much he's going for it. I mean, he commits to a performance in a way, you know, I, I don't think I've seen him. I, well, no, that's not true. He, he, he often commits to like that. And sometimes, sometimes for better, sometimes for worse. But like, I, I think, yeah, Loveless is like a, just a kind of ridiculous character. He's, I mean, he's literally got a mustache right there for the twiddling you know it's, yeah. um, he's, he's a perfect cartoon villain the whole scene with will smith and when he dresses up as a lady and uh that was wow. yeah <laughs> he gate crashes the about that. meeting yeah that was extraordinary wasn't it i mean I, I, there's a lot to unpick from that that scene I, but, <laughs> I mean, first of all I, I i mean i just want to like make a point that you know loveless is great plan his big master evil master plan is quite strange i couldn't quite make head or tail of the he wants to carve up the united states and give himself like a quarter of it i that Mm. the the politics of that was was quite confusing but then right in the middle of this a a belly dancer just arrives and he's (laughs) sort of fine with it he's just (laughs) like oh okay well yeah I, i guess i'll pause my you know evil master plan so i can just receive a belly dancer yeah, well, I don't it's, know. It's, it's even straighter than that because, like, they're literally about to shoot um, Artemis. <laughs> like, they're yes. on the cusp of pulling this trigger, and then the belly dancer. But not, not just any belly dancer. The only black person in this film is Will Smith, <laughs> <laughs> and then suddenly uh, another a black belly dancer turns up, and I don't think this is weird. <laughs> you know, um, did, did anyone invite the belly dancer? And even if they did, this is a strange time to have it. You'd be like waving a belly and go, 
five minutes. We're just going to shoot this guy and then we can do the dance. You know? <laughs> it's like Looney Tunes logic, isn't it? It's sort of like, <laughs> it's the kind of logic where uh, people are just so susceptible to sexual mores. You just see one look at a beautiful woman and you're like, go, you know, you're <laughs> <on the floor. laughs> and you just, you, you're totally, you can't do anything else. You just have to stop what you're doing and be just aroused. It's, it's very strange. <laughs> I got a, a tweet here from uh, one of my listeners, Gareth Morgan, who said, uh, there is a good story by Kevin Smith about John Peters demanding the inclusion of fighting, a fighting robot spider in the movie Superman Lives mm. that wasn't made, but turned up in this movie instead. And he talks about it on the DVD, An Evening With, apparently. So that, I didn't know that, but that's a good little nugget. Yeah, if you, you should watch that if you haven't seen it. It's, I think it's on YouTube. He, so that he does this like sort of evening with Kevin Smith where he just takes questions from the audience. And uh, yeah, he, he tells it in a very funny way, just how this producer, John Peters, was just obsessed with the idea of a giant mechanical spider and was desperate to get it in a Superman movie. And it appears eventually got his will in a, in a Western movie. Because <laughs> it does feel like... It does feel slightly shoehorned in. It doesn't, I, I mean, you know, there is sort of steampunk elements to it, but it doesn't really make sense why he has a giant mechanical spider. I mean, there's, there's a lot of questions there, aren't there? Um, yeah, yeah. But as a, as a kind of like a special effects um, gimmick, I suppose it was really, it, it, it makes sense to put something big and bold in it. But yeah, the, the yeah. choice of the spider is odd. Because it, it really is a, a quite an inefficient way to get around. Because I would have, would have thought it's, ex yes. it's expensive to run. You know, it, it's, it's hazardous because obviously of sort of the moving parts and stuff. Where you've got a, a fully functional train, just go with that. Or a, or a Zeppelin or something. Or the, or the tank much we easier. had earlier, which they used. The tank, help, yeah, help. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All that weird the kind of... Again. It's like, no, 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 we've got to go with the giant spider. But the they've got that right weird... There. They've got the weird pumpy thing that he uses because he makes that horrible joke to Will Smith about him not having um, a lower half so he can't perform sort of sexually. And yeah. then he, he yes. was, then they look back at that pumpy kind of machine thing, the mag yeah. magnet de uh, deployer. <laughs> yeah, the, ma the magnet thrower. The explosive <laughs> the magnet, magnet yeah. thrower. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just awful and horrid. Just on Will Smith, I like. I have to say, I, I thought he's very charismatic in this film, even even with the sort of terrible script he's lumbered with. I mean, he looks very good. He, he looks he looks the part. He's got that sort of. I mean, it's kind of a historical uh, '90s cowboy look. You know, he's wearing like sunglasses that are definitely, you know, from sort of Ray Ban rather than from the old west. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah. But they're, they're directed but, from the but, I mean, men in black, aren't they? Aren't they the ones yeah, exactly. Like at the edge exactly. Of the black. I mean, it's good to like bear in mind like where he was at this point in his career. I mean, he was like, he was like the biggest star in the world almost. He was. Yeah. He'd just come off a run of like Bad Boys and Independence Day and uh, and and Men in Black, and you know, he he was. I think he was maybe overconfident in his star, like, like his sort of star power could. But could carry it all zero effect on his career right because uh, he just went straight from this into other films i think uh, uh, ali was the kind of next kind of film in the list from after this yeah uh, well actually no, yeah. the legend of bag of vance which is one we could do i think um yeah mm. but yeah and uh yeah after they just went from strength to strength it's still still knocking it out now really isn't he proper a list well, what's happened to kevin klein then because he's Declined. Well, this film killed his career. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, not so much, is it? No, but he likes to do the theme tune and, and write the theme tune, doesn't he? Because he has to have, play multiple parts in every film he's in. Yes. He feels yeah. Like. I mean, he, he, I think he disowned this film. I mean, I think most people involved just slightly disowned it. Um, I, th I think he, I'm sure I've read somewhere that he thought it was uh, slightly below his station, you know, because he's quite a serious actor in a lot, in a lot of ways. He's done a lot of theatre but yeah I mean he's again he's I think he's really good in this I think he's uh he's he, it's very, even with a bad script it's very it's very hard to dislike him he's a very very sort of talented comedic actor uh, I mean there are obviously just some jokes that are incredibly laboured but yeah uh, they they work quite well together I thought I mean I did they do have good chemistry yeah yeah they've got quite good chemistry yeah and they, they do sort of have 
quite bags of charisma between them, so they do work. But the, you know, the, the way Will Smith holds himself in this film is just, it's just completely uh, the right star to be carrying this role because the swagger yeah. and the way he, every time he puts his hat on, he does a little flick of the rim and everything like that. So yes. you could tell he's yeah. absolutely loving it. And you can imagine him getting dressed in wardrobe and going, yep, yeah, I'm going to have a blast today with this. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and, and, and she comes across really well. So there's this, that really is enough to sort of sell the movie. Uh, and, like and it's not, of, it's not like incredible Oscar worthy acting, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's cool. Like movie star performance, you know, it's a, he's a proper yeah. movie star in this film. And I think that, I think there's a lot of big, big performances, you know, it feels like a big sort of popcorn Hollywood level of performances, which I really enjoyed even, even today. I thought, you know, even Salma Hayek and, and uh, you know, uh, Ted Levine, are, sort of they're, they're they're having fun with it you know yeah yeah, yeah. We, we also they, that's proven you know that, like um there is a difference between a proper charismatic movie star and someone else because like you know most other people in this role and it would have been an absolute turgid festival awfulness um, <laughs> yes it just shows you how like you know you get what you pay for at the top end and you know, this film yeah um, was like a rate of like four and a half i think it is on imdb i'm not quite sure it is on rotten tomatoes but yeah it had been a one or two if they'd stuck you know just a, a no mark there's a theory about will smith's ball sack that i'd quite like to share but i mean we can, <laughs> well, we can get into that Let's get, let's, let's, into get that. <laughs> <laughs> let's get straight into that. Let's get straight into Wilson's bullsack. <laughs> Cast your mind back to the um, the water tower scene. Um, uh, there are a lot of theories on the internet that if you pause it at the right time, uh, you can see Will Smith's uh, perhaps two veg. I'm not sure about the meat, but certainly there is some sort of nudity that, that is seen if you screen grab it in the right place. Maybe him, maybe his stunt double. I'm not sure. John, I, I, John, I saw this yesterday. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I, I, didn't, I didn't want to rewind it and start, because I thought that would be a bit too much, but I, I definitely saw sackage. There was definitely plumage going right? on. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But hold on, that, that would have been fair that he was actually naked. Yeah, there. yeah. Well, I've got this on YouTube because I rented it yesterday and I watched it. I've got to say as well, I watched this for the first time last night. So oh, I wow. well, First ever time. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those movies I've never seen. I've seen enough of it, like clips and stuff, but I've, I've just never got around to watching it. So this is wow. fresh for me yesterday. I and mean, this has happened a few times recently well, with uh, yeah, guests. Yeah, yeah. I, I noticed that the, the, the plums, I did. <laughs> I saw the plums. I was just his, his big Willie style. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but as I've still got it, and I've got another sort of 24 hours to watch it, I may well go back and screen grab that for the Twitter. Uh, pro, uh, I Twitter would, feed. I would. I think <laughs> there, is, there is at least two shots. I think there's a shot from behind where you can see something. And there's a shot where he sort of lands on the ground and there is some there is i mean there is rampant speculation on the internet about what what you can see who you can see and you know <laughs> how much of it you can see because they i think in hollywood they do wear like a little sort of modesty sack like a sort of <laughs> not much but it's a sort of just like a pouch that covers your particulars uh, uh so it might just be that that you're seeing is, is sort of a skin colored pouch but no, uh, I, I either way it's very exciting well, it was a very <laughs> realistic hairy pouch if that's what it was because there was definitely hair but I, I i can't believe we've we've dedicated so much to the podcast to to, to the secrets of cinema posing pouches well, I, think, I think it deserves its series of, uh, <laughs> like a true crime it's podcast. a podcast in itself yeah b balls in films <laughs> <laughs> the movie ball bunker yeah, <laughs> yeah. oh god Matthew there's a little sideline for you because you like the yeah, like thanks, that sort of <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah there you go we'll, we'll, we'll keep it on our Instagram feed for that little nugget uh, or those two little nuggets <laughs> uh, Matt anything else for you that sort of came up uh, as you were watching this movie again yeah um in my normal sort of um, manic rant period um uh, did anyone catch Miss Lippin Reader? <laughs> For fuck's sakes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and I, I, so you, you, see, you see this, and, and just in case anyone was uh, in any way uh, confused, Miss um, Lippin Reader um, reads lips. 
uh, for, for, which is either really fortuitous or like one of those, you know, ancient medieval things where you kind of get named by your, your profession that you do. Um, mm. But the, the other two, is it two? Well, no, he has like three kind of um, female bodyguards. They're not named in the same kind of Bondesque kind of way. Like one was just called Munitia. Uh, Miss East is probably a bit on the nose. Um, Amazonia. And it's just like, why? <laughs> why did they think Miss... Lip and reader was was fine because it was it, it's bad. I didn't like that. It has got a bit of a James Bond Austin Powers feel to it, hasn't it? I mean, yeah. having all of your just like all of your henchmen to be women is quite strange, just to be just sort of hot women, and then and and also the 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 booby gun that Will Smith wears is kind of. It's kind of a fembot thing, isn't it? It's it like is, it is an early version of the fembot. <laughs> Another thing was uh, there's a weird HMV call out when um, yeah yes uh, when um, what's his name uh, McGrath because he's got like a, a an ear horn when he when he gets like uh, knocked out like a yeah. small Jack Russell walks over and does the HMV pose. It's just like that's that's fucking odd. Why would, you, why would you do that? That was something that made me think it was weird. The foreshadowing of the, the wasp killing the tarantula. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. God. Um, but unlike a lot of foreshadowing where you have it and then it later on pays off, it is literally <laughs> the next scene. It's like, it's like, oh, there's a tarantula. Oh, what's that wasp doing? Oh, that, that wasp, he does, he kills massive spiders, which are much bigger than itself. I don't see why you keep asking about this seemingly pointless piece of information. The next scene, massive giant mechanical spider. The first thing they think about is, I know what we should do. We should do what that wasp did and get on a plane and kill it. Did, Can did, it be did. called foreshadowing if, if, you know, it's literally the thing. It's not really shadow, is it? It's full, it's it's full axling. <laughs> it's just shade. There's a bit on the on the mechanical spider where Loveless has, I think, I think they have. He has them cornered, and instead of just like shooting Will Smith, he opens a trap door so he can fight like this sort of, you know, weird metal yeah. men. Yeah. It's like yeah. a just a, a sort of parade of 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 sort of goons that he has to fight um which i think is where you get the terrible line uh i learned that from a china man which is, i mean you know you just think what are you thinking yeah i like, wrote down that um indiana jones has a lot to answer for because um, yeah the, the el over elaborate en entrance to a fight swiftly ended um, yeah yeah exactly that right at their feet because yeah it's uh, <laughs> and that's all because um, Harrison Ford had diarrhea, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, reason why we got diarrhea to thank for that. I have to say, I <laughs> we like got the, diarrhea uh... to thank for the world, world west. <laughs> <laughs> there, are, well, there are some critics who might say it's more similar to diarrhea than than I would, but that's <laughs> by the by. But the, the, that that fight scene did lead to, um, I think, one of the like actually genuinely funny jokes where. The guy's got like knives for hands, and Will Smith responds with his little little knife in his foot. So I thought that was actually quite, quite, quite witty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in a rare, a rare case of a joke that actually works. I don't know to uh, celebrate. <laughs> so something to cling to. <laughs> From politically correct point of view, I, I think there's there's um, there's there's definitely a lot of stuff we've already talked about a lot of stuff uh, that feels a bit icky. These from a 2020 perspective but like some of the, the 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 disabled jokes i think probably wouldn't get through today yeah uh, we, he talks about yeah how loveless is half a man i know he's a bad guy but i don't think that like there are other things you could insult him with couldn't you like yeah 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 the fact is that, that he's a sort of genocidal maniac <laughs> that would be, that's, that's a that kind of more of ribbing that. James West's and Lovelace's interaction, I think, like the whole of it is just racist puns and disabled phobic puns. Yes, yes. Just, yeah, yeah. There is, I don't think they say a single word to each other which doesn't lead to one of those. And, and you do kind of sit there and go, oh, is it, is it okay Could, they, they can do this just because they're both doing it? Or is it just, is it just icky? And you're like, oh, I don't know anymore. <laughs> it's not for me. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's, yeah, it's definitely not the sort of thing that would get made right now put it that way yeah on that on that note um the craggers friend of the podcast said although it's crass and toe curringly blatant about it 
The film is far more honest about racism and prejudice in that era than many other Westerns and comedies dare to be. So yeah, on, on topic there is what we were basically just saying. But so I guess really we have to decide whether this movie stays in the bunker or is released, uh, jettisons out of the pipe to the general public. And I think you are the guest, uh, uh, John, so you do get um, like the golden ticket in that respect. <laughs> so yeah, we, we're going to release the movie as it's only fair to be, to be, to be released because there, there are really some good things about this movie that, that need to be seen. If only there was like a little condensed cut of this that sort of just took the pacing one or two gears up, <laughs> it would probably yeah. make better viewing and just got rid of a lot of the little dull bits because it would be a quite interesting watch if it was maybe half the length. Maybe we need to get like, you know how Toby Maguire does his sort of uh, fan edits of The Hobbit and all that sort of thing. We just get Toby Maguire to re-edit it. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'll get in touch. It might be a better film. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, it is, I am, it, like I say, it, it does make me quite nostalgic for sort of, the sort of simpler 90s brash blockbuster sort of movie making yeah it, it cost it cost like 170 million it's crazy how much yeah yeah, yeah. this film cost that was a, uh, most yeah, of that was on the spider and the boobs i think <laughs> <laughs> well matt what do you think i mean after seeing it again yeah i, I think there's enough there's enough here uh, my only like problem with it is it, it feels it, like i said it feels like a sunday afternoon film we'd watch the family but there's just too much ickiness in it <laughs> both from like a, a sexualized a racist a, <laughs> and disabled kind of yeah uh, way there's just too much there and I, I don't think i would like to subject my family to this but it does hold a place in my heart because as i say it is the first film i can remember being properly panned and the first film I can remember I didn't necessarily agree with because I had kind of good fun watching it. So there you go. You were you were doing the bunker before you even knew it. I didn't even know I was doing it, man. I didn't yeah. even know I was doing it. <laughs> as a sort of chase to the film as well, I, I highly recommend you watch the the music video of Wild Wild West, which is just hilarious. <laughs> uh, it's it's got it's got Will Smith plus his sort of rap buddies and a crew of dancers in sort of semi-historical costumes doing like 90s break dancing uh they've got they get their shirts off i mean it's 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 off the chain it's i'm sorry really off the chain are, are there, has it got plum pouches at all or is it <laughs> <laughs> uh, i can neither confirm nor deny well I, i'm only here for plum pouches so <laughs> on that note john look thank you so much for coming on the show and uh giving giving me uh, a chance to watch this movie for the first time i enjoyed it I can't believe it's happened again. Another to an extent. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. And, and yeah, thank you for subjecting yourself to this. Uh, <laughs> John, where can we find Classic. you on Twitter and, and social media and things like that? I'm on Twitter at Mr. Underscore Nugent, although I'm not on it very often these days, but uh, I am on there. I feel free to say hello. And I think I'm on some other things i'm on i'm on instagram as mr nuge i think again i i'm i'm not a huge social media fan anymore um but uh but yeah i i pop in from time to time to come to say hello and uh, we can see you your work on uh, empire magazine online and on in imprint as well yes yes please please buy empire and <laughs> keep my keep let me still have a job uh <laughs> i'd be very and keep it as the world's number one most successful magazine, as you said earlier. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. John, thanks again. What we we'll say, if you are new to the podcast, uh, make sure you you uh, follow us on our social media channels and visit the website, which is uh, www.moviebunkerpodcast.com. And we've got Patreon up and running as well, haven't we, Matthew? Yeah, not that you'd know it. <laughs> so if you um, if you fancy supporting us financially, uh, just to help us pay the rent, yeah, just contribute if you want to. It's completely fine. You have to, but yeah, uh, get involved on social media. That's what we like really to talk about these critically panned films together and find the good things to say about them. So your answers um, are like Hugh Grant proposing; they just go on forever. <laughs> um, well, you never help, and you were supposed to be doing this yourself. You, <laughs> we said I, I this. It. It's it's like watching you know ants under a magnifying glass. Not that I ever did that. <laughs> and then we have to embarrass the guests because they have to just sit and wait while we do it and just think christ this is unprofessional <laughs> i I'm, i've been on the empire podcast enough times to know what an unprofessional podcast feels like it's, <laughs> it's, it's all good we're well and truly up there um right so until next time john thanks again thank you
Thanks, Thank Matt. You. See you later. Cheers. Bye.